1. Nursing assistants work in a lot of different places. One place that CNAs work is a skilled nursing facility. This type of facility is also called a. Hospital. b. Rehab center. c. Hospice. d. Nursing home. The correct answer is d. Nursing home. 2. Many people, particularly older people, go to what kind of healthcare facility after they are discharged from a hospital after a stroke? A. A subacute care center. B. A hospice. C. A respite center. D. A group home. The correct answer is A. A subacute care center. 3. A CNA, MA, and RN. All provide care for 10 patients in a subacute facility. What is the term for this collaborative approach to patient care? A. Group care. B. Primary care. C. Team nursing. D. Rehab. The correct answer is C. Team nursing. 4. A CNA is covering another CNA's lunch break on another floor. She answers the light for a patient who complains of chest pain. Who should the CNA report this finding to? A. Nurse. B. Provider. C. Director of Nursing. D. The other CNA went back from lunch break. The correct answer is A. Nurse. 5. You are asked to complete a bed change for a 300 pounds patient who is immobile and difficult to turn. You feel uncomfortable changing the bed yourself. What is your next course of action? A. Schedule a time with another nurse or CNA to have assistance during the bed change. B. Complete the bed change yourself, even though you are uncomfortable. C. Wait until shift change to let the next shift take care of it. D. Tell the patient that they do not need a bed change. The correct answer is A. Schedule a time with another nurse or CNA to have assistance during the bed change. 6. Which duties would be performed by a CNA in team nursing? A. Assessment of the heart and lungs. B. Teaching physical therapy exercises. C. Taking vital signs and blood sugars readings. D. All of the above. The correct answer is C. Taking vital signs and blood sugars readings. 7. The CNA can legally A. Supervise other CNAs. B. Teach other CNAs. C. Mentor other CNAs. D. None of the above. The correct answer is D. None of the above. 8. The director of nursing at your long-term care nursing home has assigned you to be in charge of the nursing home for the weekend because she is going away on a cruise vacation to the Caribbean. What should you do? A. Refuse to do the assignment. B. Do the best you can do. C. Ask about the details. D. Call the owner. The correct answer is A. Refuse to do the assignment. 9. Which of the following actions is ethically wrong in the care of nursing home residents? A. The CNA remains right outside the bathroom door and instructs the patient to pull the call light when they have finished urinating. B. The CNA wipes the patient's finger with an alcohol swab prior to taking a blood glucose level. C. The CNA does not let a confused high fall risk patient ambulate in the halls without assistance. D. The CNA chooses to complete an incontinence change every four hours on a patient who is incontinent every hour. The correct answer is D. The CNA chooses to complete an incontinence change every four hours on a patient who is incontinent every hour. 10. A patient requires a dressing change for the first time after surgery. 
Which of the following staff cannot legally change the patient's dressing immediately after surgery? A. CNA. B. LPN. C. RN. D. MD. The correct answer is A. CNA. 11. Which of the following is now the minimal requirement to be able to legally record and document data, such as vital signs and blood sugar readings, within a hospital setting? A. Experience. B. Certification. C. Licensure. D. College degree. The correct answer is B. Certification. 12. Who developed the hierarchy of needs? A. Erickson. B. Piaget. C. Maslow. D. Nightingale. The correct answer is C. Maslow. 13. The levels of the hierarchy of needs are A. Physical needs, safety, and security needs, love and belonging needs, esteem needs and self-actualization. B. Need for freedom, need for resources, needs of self and needs of others. C. Subjective needs, objective needs data analysis and needs for resolution. D. Integumentary system, respiratory system, nervous system and cardiac system. The correct answer is A. Physical needs, safety and security needs, love and belonging needs, esteem needs and self-actualization. 14. The CNA is working on a busy med surg hospital floor and is caring for 10 patients. Vital signs are taken every 4 hours, with meals delivered at 7.30, 12.30 and 5.30. It is currently 9 o'clock and all patients have received their breakfast trays. Last vital signs were taken at 4 o'clock. Which of the following is the highest priority? A. A patient is requesting a full bed bath right now. B. Taking vitals on all patients, since they were not taken at 8 o'clock. C. The patients have finished their meals and are requesting the trays to be taken from the room. D. A patient is complaining of chest pain after surgery and is requesting pain medicine. The correct answer is D. A patient is complaining of chest pain after surgery and is requesting pain medicine. 15. It is nearly time for your lunch break. A nurse is requesting assistance with an incontinence bed change. Which of the following is not a proper response? A. Gather supplies and assist the nurse with the bed change. B. Tell the nurse you cannot help as you are going on lunch. C. Delay your lunch if needed to assist the nurse as possible. D. Request the CNA covering your lunch to assist the nurse. The correct answer is B. Tell the nurse you cannot help as you are going on lunch. 16. You are the CNA caring for Mrs. Thomas. You see a notation on the nursing care plan that states, ambulate at least 10 yards QID. This patient will be assisted with ambulation at which of the following times? A. 10 a.m. B. 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. C. 10 a.m., 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. D. 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. The correct answer is D. 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. 17. The RN asks you to bring the unit's collected lab specimens to the lab stat. You should a. Not do this errand, because CNAs do not do stats. b. Run this errand as soon as you can. c. Run this errand immediately and without delay. d. Before the end of your shift or after your lunch. 
The correct answer is C. Run this errand immediately and without delay. 18. Hospital policy states that patients on the medical floor should have vital signs taken every four hours. Which of the following is an appropriate abbreviation for this order? A. V signs QID. B. BSQ 4 hours. C. Vital signs QOD. D. Vitals QD 4 times. The correct answer is B. BSQ 4 hours. 19. What does the medical abbreviation ADL stand for? A. Activities of daily living. B. Advantages of disability and life insurance. C. Assessment of depth and length. D. All day long. The correct answer is A. Activities of daily living. 20. You are caring for a patient with a BKA. What do you expect to see when entering the patient's room related to this abbreviation? When working with the patient A. A patient with an amputation below the knee. B. A patient with tubes coming out of both kidneys. C. A blood sugar of 600 once you take a finger stick glucose. D. A patient with swollen legs from heart failure. The correct answer is A. A patient with an amputation below the knee. 21. Which of the following lists the five senses? A. Sight, hearing, taste, smell and common sense. B. Hearing, taste, smell, common sense and auditory. C. Sight, taste, smell, auditory, and visual. D. Hearing, smell, taste, sight, and touch. The correct answer is D. Hearing, smell, taste, sight, and touch. 22. What senses do nursing assistants use to observe patients and residents? A. Sight, hearing, and touch. B. Sight and hearing only. C. Sight and common sense only. D. Taste and hearing only. The correct answer is A. Sight, hearing, and touch. 23. A CNA is caring for an immobile patient and notices a new open sore to the patient's sacrum. What should the CNA do? A. Report this finding to the nurse. B. Place barrier cream over the sore. C. Ask the patient how they got the sore. D. Do nothing. The correct answer is A. Report this finding to the nurse. 24. A CNA is working in the resident dining hall and notices a resident grabbing at her throat without making any noise. What should the CNA's response be? A. Perform the Heimlich maneuver. B. Start chest compressions. C. Slap the resident's back. D. Call for help and wait. The correct answer is A. Perform the Heimlich maneuver. 25. A CNA is bathing a child on a pediatric hospital unit. She notices the child has bruising to his arms and legs. What should be the CNA's first response be? A. Call Child Protective Services. B. Ask the child what happened. C. Confront the parents. D. Report the finding to the charge nurse per hospital protocol. The correct answer is D. Report the finding to the charge nurse per hospital protocol. 26. Which risk factor places patients and residents at the greatest risk for falls? A. Old age. B. Middle years. C. Pneumonia. D. COPD.
The correct answer is A. Old age. 27. Which sensory impairment places residents and patients at risk for falls? A. Blindness. B. Confusion. C. Weakness. D. Aging. E. A and C only. The correct answer is A. Blindness. 28. You are caring for a resident in an Alzheimer's unit in a nursing home. The resident is repeatedly pushing on the locked door trying to exit the building. Which of the following would be your first response? A. Unlock the door and allow the resident to exit the building. B. Take hold of the resident's elbow and direct them toward the room. C. Attempt to verbally reorient or redirect the resident back to their room. D. Assist the resident to their room and apply restraints to prevent her from leaving. The correct answer is C. Attempt to verbally reorient or redirect the resident back to their room. 29. You are working in a dual occupancy room in a long term care facility when the residents start arguing back and forth from their beds. What is the best response? A. Tell the residents they must stop arguing. B. Notify the nurse or resident care manager. C. Change the room for one resident. D. Pull the curtain between the two residents. The correct answer is B. Notify the nurse or resident care manager. 30. Which of the following? is most likely to de-escalate a disoriented patient who is starting to become verbally abusive. A. Address their concerns in a slow and calm manner. B. Shout at them to snap out of it. C. Close the door to their room. D. Physically assist the patient back into a soup and position in bed. The correct answer is A address their concerns in a slow and calm manner. 31. A CNA notices an uncapped syringe lying on the floor in the patient's room. What is the CNA's response? A. Safely pick up the syringe and place in the sharps container, then report it to the nurse. B. Ignore the syringe, the cleaning staff will find it, and dispose of it. C. Safely pick up the syringe and place it in the trash can. D. Leave the syringe in place and report it to the nurse. The correct answer is A. Safely pick up the syringe in place in the sharps container, then report it to the nurse. 32. The fire alarms in your nursing home begin ringing. Nobody on your unit is in immediate danger. You must now. A. Evacuate the patients laterally. B. Evacuate the patients vertically. C. Close the patient doors. D. Open the patient doors. The correct answer is C. Close the patient doors. 33. A small contained fire breaks out in a small trash can near the lobby of the nursing home. No visitors or residents are in immediate danger. You have pulled the alarm. What should you do next? A. Extinguish the fire, if you can do so safely and without harm. B. Run away from the fire. C. Cover the fire with a blanket. D. Open the windows and exit the floor. The correct answer is A. Extinguish the fire if you can do so safely and without harm. 34. Which of the following locations would provide you with the most up-to-date information on how to respond to a disaster within your facility? A. Google search. B. Ask another CNA. C. The facility's policy and procedures manual. D. Human Resources Handbook. The correct answer is C. 
the Facilities Policy and Procedures Manual. 35. In the event of a tornado spotting near the proximity of the building, what is the CNA's response to maintain patient safety? A. Move patients as far away from windows as possible. B. Assist ambulatory patients to exit the building. C. Do nothing, the building is secure. D. Take patients down to the basement using the elevator. The correct answer is A. Move patients as far away from windows as possible. 36. Which patients should be evacuated first in the event of a fire within the area? A. Immobile patients or patients on life support. B. Small children and ambulatory patients. C. Patients requiring transfer assistance or use of a stretcher. D. Patients in wheelchairs or who can ambulate with walkers. The correct answer is B. Small children and ambulatory patients. 37. You hear the code for an infant abduction over the intercom in the hospital. You notice a suspicious person walking with a large bag quickly through the halls. What is your response? A. Tell the person to give you their bag. B. Ignore the suspicious person. C. Block the exit to prevent the suspicious person from leaving. D. Safely attempt to detain the person until security arrives. The correct answer is D. Safely attempt to detain the person until security arrives, through conversation or other means, as long as it is safe to do so. 38. A patient is confined to their bed and needs assistance at meals. What position should you place the bed in as you are feeding the patient? A. Supin. B. High Fowlers. C. Reverse Trendelenburg. D. Lateral. The correct answer is B. High Fowlers. 39. When cleansing the genital area during perennial care, the nurse aide should A. Cleanse the penis with a circular motion starting from the base and moving toward the tip. B. Replace the foreskin after it has been pushed back to cleanse an uncircumcised penis. C. Cleanse the rectal area first and then clean the patient's genital area. D. Use the same area on the washcloth for each washing and rinsing stroke for a female resident. The correct answer is B. Replace the foreskin after it has been pushed back to cleanse an uncircumcised penis. 40. Which of the following tasks would more likely be performed by a nurse? A. Feeding an Alzheimer's patient who does not have trouble swallowing. B. Ambulating a low-fall risk patient with a walker. C. Bathing a surgical patient prior to surgery. D. Trimming the toenails of a patient with diabetic neuropathy. The correct answer is D. Trimming the toenails of a patient with diabetic neuropathy. 41. Blank. May result when patients or residents ignore the urge to defecate. A. Constipation. B. Diarrhea. C. Incontinence. D. Hemorrhoids. The correct answer is A. Constipation. 42. The chain of infection includes the A. Germ, agent, Reservoir, exit portal, mode of transmission, entry port, and susceptible host. B. Active natural, active artificial, passive natural and passive artificial. C. Opportunism, weakness, immunity, and colonization. D. Intrinsic, extrinsic, internal and external transmission. The correct answer is 
A. Germ, Agent, Reservoir, Exit Portal, Mode of Transmission, Entry Port, and Susceptible Host. 43. A sepsis is defined as A. The absence of all microorganisms. B. The absence of disease-causing germs. C. A urinary infection. D. A pathogenic infection. The correct answer is B. The absence of disease-causing germs. 44. Which of the following patients is likely to be placed on contact precautions in a hospital setting? A. A patient with MRSA. B. A patient who is coughing. C. A patient who just had hip surgery. D. An elderly patient. The correct answer is A. A patient with MRSA. 45. What are standard precautions? A. Hand washing or hand sanitizing between patients, wearing gloves if handling bodily fluids. B. Wearing gloves at all times, only hand washing between patients. C. Wearing gloves and a mask, while in the patient's room. D. Gloves and hand washing is not required between patient rooms. The correct answer is A. Hand washing or hand sanitizing between patients, wearing gloves if handling bodily fluids. 46. Which of the following hospital floors would you most likely expect to see reverse isolation precautions? A. Surgical. B. Oncology. C. Obstetrics. D. Alzheimer's. The correct answer is B. Oncology. 47. Mobility is an important human function. The hazards of immobility lead to many physical problems and emotional problems. Immobility can lead to detrimental cardiac, muscular, respiratory, skeletal, urinary, gastrointestinal, skin and emotional changes. Which of the following is an example of a skeletal hazard of immobility? A. Contractures. B. Constipation. C. Calcium loss. D. Catabolism. The correct answer is C. Calcium loss. 48. An emotional consequence of immobility is A. Depression. B. Dementia. C. Delirium. D. Diversion. The correct answer is A. Depression. 49. Which of the following age groups are at the highest risk for injury causing falls? A. Elderly. B. Middle aged. C. Young adult. D. Children. The correct answer is A. Elderly. 50. All of the following are preventive measures to avoid pressure ulcers in the elderly, except A. Repositioning every two hours. B. Applying skin barrier cream to high pressure areas. C. Changing incontinence pads as soon as they are soiled. D. Applying contracture boots in an immobile patient. The correct answer is D. Applying contracture boots in an immobile patient. 51. Where should the wheelchair be placed when transferring a stroke patient from their bed to the chair? A. On the patient's weak side. B. At the foot of the bed. C. At the head of the bed. D. On the patient's strong side. The correct answer is D. On the patient's strong side. 52. Which of the following would not be considered a fall risk intervention? A. Fall mats. B. 
Bed alarm. C. Non-skid socks. D. Restraints. The correct answer is D. Restraints. 53. Two CNAs are caring for a total care elderly patient with dementia. Which of the following scenarios is incorrect? A. The CNAs stand on either side of the bed to help turn the patient. B. One CNA holds the patient, while the other cleans the peri area. C. The CNAs discuss another patient's care, while caring for this patient. D. The CNAs boost the patient up in bed using the draw sheet. The correct answer is C. The CNAs discuss another patient's care, while caring for this patient. 54. Your patient is saying that they have chest pain and a pounding heart. You touch the person's arm, and you feel moisture. The patient is sweating, and you also see that the person's lips are blue. These signs and symptoms indicate that the person is most likely a. nervous and anxious, b. having a panic attack, c. having a heart attack, d. calling out for emotional attention. The correct answer is c. having a heart attack. 55. You are caring for John B. John is 77 years old. He has edema, or swelling, in his legs, and he has a fluid restriction in terms of his fluid intake. You have been assigned to weigh him daily. Based on these symptoms and the care that he is being given, what disorder is he most likely affected with? A. Diabetes. B. Dementia. C. Congestive heart failure. D. Contiguous heart disease. The correct answer is C. Congestive heart failure. 56. You are caring for a diabetic patient who reports dizziness and is shaky and sweaty. The patient is alert and oriented. The patient's vital signs were normal one hour ago. After reporting your findings to the nurse, what do you expect the nurse? To ask you to do a take the patient's blood sugar b take the patient's vital signs c call a rapid response or code d answer the call light of a patient who is requesting a walk the correct answer is a take the patient's blood sugar 57 you are assisting an elderly female patient to the bathroom. Which of the following would be important to emphasize to the patient to prevent urinary tract infections? A. Wipe from front to back. B. Stand up slowly to prevent dizziness. C. Make sure to press the call light when you are done. D. Put one hand on the walker and one hand on the seat to press yourself us. The correct answer is A. Wipe from front to back. 58. Do you notice a patient is walking with a shuffling gait with a walker and has jerky movements of the arms and legs? The patient has some difficulty speaking but is alert and oriented. What do you suspect is causing this patient's symptoms? A. Alzheimer's. B. Heart failure. C. Parkinson's disease. D. Stroke. The correct answer is C. Parkinson's disease. 59. A patient is complaining of shortness of breath and requesting his breathing treatment. Do you notice the patient is wearing a nasal cannula with oxygen flowing at 2 liters per minute? What disease do you suspect this patient suffers from? A. Coronary artery disease. B. COPD. C. UTI. D. Constipation. The correct answer is B. COPD. 
60. Which is considered a normal or healthy type of grief? A. Anticipatory grief. B. Complicated grief. C. Unresolved grief. D. Inhibited grief. The correct answer is A. Anticipatory grief.